I was talking about how he felt Saturday was the best defensive effort he's seen from the team this season. Do you agree with that assessment? Well, we, we there's some things we need to be better at, but I thought our guys and at different times during the game played played well. Uh, you know, we have to do continue to do a better job uh, in places of tackling. We did a good job of creating turnovers. You know, when you look at the the score, you know, you had a team that came in averaging 50 points and you hold them to 30. Okay, you you can uh, you know you can take some relief in that, but but. There's still a lot for us to do. There's still a lot of growing for us to do. And, and our players know that. So uh, we're looking at this week as another opportunity to be able to do that in a, in a different environment, number one, and versus a very different type offense. Um, what, how do you prepare? Do you prepare any differently for such a different offense than you do? Oh, yeah. It's, it's different. It's a different offense. And, you know, I, I've talked to the players about the difference. I've talked to the players about the, the mindset that we have to have when you face this offense that is so structured and so much ready to attack your shortcomings from an assignment standpoint, from an alignment standpoint. So, we feel like as a defense, this is one of the biggest challenges we've faced and that we will face. So our guys are, uh, even today, you know, locked in and, and thinking about, you know, the opportunity to play this game. Given the differences both on your defense and on the Navy offense from a year ago, do you watch last year's game where you just focus more on this season? Well, because of the fact that they do you know, you hear it all the time, we do what we do. Well, they do what they do. So anytime you can watch them, you know, you, you're just trying to learn. You're trying to figure out their keys. You're trying to figure out how can you be on the attack, you know, rather than uh, being at their mercy. So we watched last year. We watched two years ago. We watch any, any video that we can to be able to gain more insight on how they do and why they do the things that they do so that so that we on our side from our standpoint can do a better job of of putting the ball you know in our court and and, and making those guys react to us rather than the, the opposite of that given Navy's tendency to cut block how do you prepare your defensive line for those kind of situations and especially because you don't necessarily and that's the toughest thing is that you, you don't want to do that. But we say, we say to our players, we'd rather do it, we let rather you have somebody that you know cut you than somebody you don't know, you know. And if you don't practice it, if you don't as best you can, it's, it's difficult because your scout team, they don't play for Navy. You know, your scout team, they, they were recruited to operate in this offense. And they are playing because they are – operators of this offense and you know you have guys who that's what they do you know day after day after day that's what they do talking about the Navy offense so it's difficult throughout a short week to be able to have your scout team operate as the Navy offense would but you have to you have to be daring enough uh, because it, it only helps your players you have to go out there and you have to work on the cut block because Going 100 miles an hour and getting cut is a little bit different than doing it at practice. Well, if you didn't give them the opportunity to be able to face that and go through the fundamentals, because there's a way to play the cut block. And if the first time you go through that in your mind is on game day, it's not a lot of fun for you or for the trainers. Jordan Wyatt set the program record for defensive touchdowns on Saturday. Um, where have you seen him grow the most since you? Well, he, he is truly an example of, of what growth and maturity can, can do for a player, how it can help his, how it can help his confidence, how it can help that player's uh, understanding of the defense and understanding of what you're trying to get him to do. And I, I continue to say that Jordan, 
yes, I'm his coach, and coaches get a lot of credit, so I'll take some for him. But it, honestly, Jordan works harder than you know many coaches, many players that I've had opportunity to coach. So uh, some of the things that he's done is because he's put himself in position to be able to do it. He's put himself in position because he prepares each week. And so on game day, he understands what's going to happen on the play. And, and it's almost second nature that he makes a play because he's played it over and over in his head. And when he talks in the meeting room, you know that he understands how they are trying to attack him as a player, how they're trying to attack his position. And it, 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 you, when do players do that, they make plays. Justin Lawler makes plays because he understands his responsibility. He understands how he fits in it all, and he knows what's you know what's going to happen. So it's just a matter of him going out and making the play when the opportunity presents itself. When, when you say Jordan's one of the hardest working players you've been around, like where where do you see that? How is his preparation? Different? Well, on, on the we we have a thing that we do in the cornerback room is the players present a scouting report to each other. And we do that on Thursdays. And so what they do is, part of this is the things that Coach Malone has said all week. But then some of it is things that I want you to go out and find on the video. I want you to go and find out in the world versus the opponent. And he always comes back with the most information. And at practice, he, he's not a guy who's taking lazy steps. He's always working on his technique. He's always trying to help somebody else. So, so those are the things that I feel as a player, not only for yourself, but that take the rest of the group to another level. And I'll, players who make other players better, they're, they're the best players in my mind. So who are some of the scout guys who are helping you simulate the Navy offense? Colin Rock, who is a defensive back, is a guy who is, is going to be able to help us as one of their slots. Kane Norman, Merrick Pierce will be, you know, guys that will be val valuable for us. Uh, Judah Bell, you know, will work as a receiver. But they have bigger receivers, and they do a good job of blocking, and it's a, a great thing that Judah does for us and has done all season long. Uh, where you kind of struggle is, is the offensive linemen because you don't have a, a, a ton of those guys to be able to help you. But those guys will, you know, those names that I said, those guys will help us with the skill positions that uh, that Navy will bring to us. Mikhail O'Neal had two big plays on the first two drives uh, on Saturday. Um, where have you seen him develop in his sophomore season? Well, he continues. He continues to to do well when 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 we put him in those positions to make tackles. When we put him in positions like the one you saw to create the turnover to make those kinds of plays, he he's done it. You know, he, he's leading us in tackles right now because it's it's set for him to be the free player. And sometimes sometimes that's in different places. And, and sometimes it's not the easiest tackle for him to make, but he continues to show up and, and make tackles and make the plays that, that we, meet, we need him to make. He is one of the guys who is responsible for getting us aligned, and he does a great job of that. But like I talked about with Jordan, he does a great job of studying. He does a great job of preparing himself so that he can get not only himself lined up, but get the rest of the guys on the defense aligned as well. Anything else?